for those of you who are on uh, on night hacking and following night hacking, obviously uh, this is one of many uh, many sessions that has been delivered on uh, on nighthacking.com, and uh, feel free to feel free to join nighthacking.com for other sessions that are going to be uh, streamed live from uh, from Javaland. So joining us today, uh, we have Andres Almaraz, uh, a regular night hacker, v jugger conference goer. Yeah, you can tell by the sticker right there, night hacking. There we go. Woo. There we go. Mine's. I actually ran out of space for mine, so mine's underneath now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Real estate's a, a tough thing on, on laptops these days. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Groovy, huh? Uh, yeah, we were talking Groovy, but it's mostly will be actually ASCII. Now. Really? We always yeah, talk Groovy. What's happening? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love to talk about Groovy, but as a matter of fact, I found out the ASCII doctor to be a, a topic that is of very much of interest to Java developers, even though ASCII doctor is a project that is written in Ruby. Mm -hmm. So, so why, why ASCII doctor then? I mean, you, you work for Canoe? Uh, yes, I work for this company called Canoe, and uh, we do a lot of interesting things with technology. And uh, of the many things that you do usually on a project is eventually you have to come up with to a phase which is documentation. And uh, personally, I really don't like doing documentation. I think that is a, a feeling shared overall by many people. But we have found out that by using ASCII Doctor, uh, we, we regain that feeling of having fun and making real progress and being really productive while writing documentation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is documentation so hard then? Is it, is it the tools or is it just the mindset of people writing documentation? It could be a little bit of the mindset because uh, creating documentation is seen as a dual task. It's not as fun as creating something as, as, as working with, uh, with programming languages and eventually fixing some bugs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's also because of the current state of tooling. You have to uh, ascribe yourself to a particular way of working for a particular tool. So if, when, once you start creating content, then you feel like, oh, I need to put this in italics or move this to a format and this and that. And then the, the, the formatting and the syntax gets in the way. It's, it's, so, it's so much in your face that you end up writing less and less content and more format. It's mm -hmm. kind of like with HTML. HTML is a great format to put content out on the web but if you start to write it by hand, uh, you get lost in the sea of tags very quickly. And then you start to use a, a different tool, and uh, it's all click and drag and wissy wig and you name it. And then you get lost in, the, in that particular tool. And it's, it's not like it's so easy to just write content. Okay. So, so why ask it, then? What does it, what does it provide? What's the, what's the I guess the problem is trying to solve, you just mentioned, either, either tools which are too complex or, or too much boilerplate, I guess. Yes, exactly. How does ASCII Doctor... We got, so what we're going to be talking about today is, is 10 tips, right? We've got about... How long have we got? <laughs> We've got about maybe 40, 35, 40 minutes left. We're going to go through 10 tips, maybe, uh, and we'll see you know, 10, 10 great tips about how to use ASCII Doctor. But what's, what makes ASCII Doctor so unique and what makes it different to other documentation? So let me show you. Let's, 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 let's kick start. I already have a, a project. Uh, so the, the thing about ASCII Doctor is you can use it on the command line. Mm -hmm. You can use it on, on the web. So there's a, there are plugins for Chrome and Firefox. So you can render ASCII.context as is on the browser. So it's a, a, quick, a quick preview of, of the document that you just written. But you, you can also have integration with build tools. And the case that I'm going to showcase today is both Gradle and Maven. Right? Wow. Yes, exactly. You can do this. Uh, uh, you might want to make that tiny bit bigger, actually. Yeah. So I'm going to put this on the center, and then uh, see if I remember. Uh, uh, what is it? No. Uh, I always forget. Yeah, there, there it is. It looks much bigger in the center, there we go. I suppose. That's good. That's yes, exactly. So this is a regular Gradle build, but you can notice that it's also, there's also a POM file there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can um, transform ASCII doc documents with either of these tools. So in this particular project, I have both of them, and that is for a very specific reason I'm going to show in a moment why. Uh, let's, so let's go back to this. Let me show you the Gradle build, and I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger so everybody can see. And uh, basically, what you need to do is apply this plugin, the ASCII Doctor Gradle plugin. And uh, the rest is just the default uh, configuration on how you can produce 
HTML5 content or PDF content out of the same uh, source file. Mm -hmm. This is very important because it's not just like in, in other microformats such as Markdown that you can only transform to HTML. Mm -hmm. With uh, ASCII Doctor, you can transform to HTML, PDF, EPUB, or even DocBook, LaTeX. And once you are into DocBook and LaTeX pipelines, then you can transform furthermore to other uh, backends. So this is just the default setting. And what I'm going to show is the settings for Maven now. You see there's just a, like a regular Maven uh, setup, which has the Maven plugin, uh, the ASCII Doctor Maven plugin apply. The settings are pretty much almost the same. Uh, actually, I can remove this one. We're not in box days. We're in Java land. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. So I, I'm not, not anymore. I will consider myself a Maven expert. So I went to the website of the Maven plugin. I copy and pasted what they have in the README into this project, and it just works. Exactly the same thing happens in the Gradle plugin. We got good documentation of all the um, um, options available to the plugins. So it's very easy to just copy and paste, drag, do, and boom, you got your build working. Cool. So this is what we have now. So let me show you the source. Does it hurt you to talk about Maven? I know you're uh, just, just, I know a, you're just a little bit. To, uh, to Gradle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been doing Maven for a long, long time. And yeah. since I moved to, to Gradle, and uh, uh, things uh, look a little bit brighter. Uh, for okay. those of you that follow us on the Bee Joke, uh, Simon and I did a talk on, uh, was it last year? On uh, yeah, Gradle and Maven? Year, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was last year, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gradle hot or not, I think Yeah, it was exactly. Called, it? If you're curious about if it's Gradle hot or not versus Maven, just check that out. Yeah, this is sure. in the virtual jug. Okay, so here's the source. And uh, you look at it, it's just a, like a regular text file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's little syntax around. And I'm going to render it in just a moment, and then we go uh, piece by piece. Uh, so let's do uh, clean. So there are no, nothing on my sleeves, even though I don't have long sleeves. Uh, so here we go. Run the ASCII doctor task. That warning is fine. Then we open this. Uh, build ASCII doctor HTML. There is the index. And you see that I also have access to the PDF. There we go. Which nice. generates the table of contents automatically, and those, these things have uh, links, so you can go there. Pretty much almost the same information. Now, this is being rendered using the default uh, settings for PDF, and you can customize this with the style sheets. So here in the HTML, you can see there's a title, some uh, metadata about the, uh, the authors, paragraphs, sections, list, and some uh, uh, a, a, a block of source which is uh, has syntax highlighting and whatnot. This is really nice. Now, what I want to talk about is that this feature, the fact that I can embed real source code into documentation, is the one that sold me the usage of ASCII doctor. Mm -hmm. Because when you're writing a technical document, uh, you would like to showcase snippets of code from the production code, right? Mm -hmm. So most most of the times, what we do is we copy and paste from production. Everything is fine. You push a release, a next release for the, the production code, and what happens? The documentation gets outdated immediately. So if there was a way for you to reach into the production code and grab it as is, inject it or put it into documentation, so that any time you update production, you also update documentation, that would be very, very great. And that's exactly what an ASCII doctor allows us to do. So it kind of it kind of half helps, I guess, in that the code snippets would, will be up to date, but the documentation around those may not be. Just, there's still an amount of that. Yeah, of course, what you write around the, the snippet, you do have to update this. Yeah. But at the very least, the snippet of code will be correct. Code is documentation, right? Yes, exactly. So what we have here is this exactly that, that portion here. This is where we define the link to the source code. We give some hints. This is a source block. We want to have syntax highlighting that looks like Java. We want to see line numbers. And if the code happens to stretch all the way to the right, mm. we don't want it to break uh, so that we see everything together. Okay. Now here, this feature says include. So we can include any file. It could be an HTML, ASCII doc, or a Java file like this one, or JavaScript, you name it. It could be anything. And uh, you supply a path. And what looks uh, a little silly here is this thing. This is called an attribute. And this is another great thing about ASCII doc, that attributes are actually variables. Okay. You can have variables on your document. You can define it from the outside, or you can define it inside the document itself. 
So for example, let's say, uh, let's define a new variable. Uh, this would be um, B jogger, if I type it correctly. And the name will be Simon Maple. Hello, I'm here with, and I make use of that attribute, B jogger at Java land. Save it. Render the content again. Uh, let's not do a clean, so it will be faster. Could probably do uh, incremental compilation. This mm -hmm. is a great feature from Gradle. Mm -hmm. So the next time I change the source file, the task will be automatically restarted, so I don't have to do it again on the command line. Good. So it's, st it's still waiting. Just refresh, and there you got it. Cool. Right. So that's exactly what we're doing here. That's one of the tips. Make use of attributes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, we are pointing to the start of the project. So it could be it is the root directory of the whole project, and I want to navigate all the way down to this Java sources that you will see I have here on the left side. There are my Java sources, mm -hmm. just plain Java code. So here I'm just making sure that I can grab that production code and put it in my document. Mm -hmm. So if we have a look at the production code. Uh, this looks nice. I have some funky Java log there. I have a license. So what if I want to embed my snippet of code without uh, showcasing the license? Mm -hmm. That's fine. We can go back here and say lines. And let's see. The line begins at number 4, and the last line is 32. So I can say 4, and then using a Groovy or a Ruby range, point that way. Mm -hmm. right? Save it. Refresh. The header is gone. Mm -hmm. Nice. What happens if I refactor my code, which is a very uh, often operation that we apply to our code? So it's just like reformatting that. Yeah. We save this. I don't know if it's going to pick it up. Uh, so we probably will have to restart it again. Uh, because the ASCII doctor task doesn't keep track of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, we need to. Sorry about that. We need to clean it. Um, I think it didn't pick it up. Oh, messing up. If it doesn't break, it's not a live demo, right? <laughs> That's right. That's what live demos are for. Oh, come on. OK, last time. This one works for sure. Sorry, oh, it's like I'm using Maven again. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, generates the documentation. And then we see that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do instead is tell ASCII doc that we changed the last element of the range to be minus one. This is a feature found in Ruby ranges. And this is the other tip that if you're including documents and you just want to include up to the end of the file, then just put a minus one and that's it. Mm -hmm. So now it doesn't matter if you have many spaces or not, uh, you will see the whole content. <clears throat> but if you wanted to, uh, what if you wanted to embed, uh, I don't know, maybe some uh, gists or something like that? Can you, is, that, is that something you could do? Code from, code from third parties? Uh, yes, you can. Um, say, let's go here and uh, to, uh, let's search for a gist, uh, like this one perhaps. And... Uh, what we do is we copy somewhere here at the end this JavaScript code. Okay. The name of the file is build.gradle. If you do this, it will not work. Why? Because uh, ASCII doctor does not understand HTML. What we can do is surround this block. I'm going to uh, push it up so that we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to surround this block with these four special characters, mm -hmm. which means Whatever is inside that block is going to be sent as is to the backend. Okay. And because the backend will be HTML, it will render it directly. So now that we save, this thing kickstarts again. And then go back. And there you there go. There you go. So is the, is the PDF then generated from the HTML? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, open, uh, build, um, ASCII doc, PDF. PDF. No. Okay. Because that is direct HTML. So the PDF render does not understand HTML tags. Right. 
Oh, but that was a good question. Uh, but say that, OK, so now you can embed anything that is directly to HTML in this way. This is will be pass-through content. Um, you could say that instead of in putting or in embedding the whole content of your file, you just want to embed a single pieces, for example, a method. So what if you were to able to surround the mm. method with some special markup? Mm. So what we're going to use is just plain comments, plain Java comments. And uh, you could use this with plain XML comments or JavaScript, a specific language comment you can use. Uh, you have to follow this syntax. So give it the, uh, the tag. Uh, no, it's, I think it's just one. Uh, give it a name, like main method. I uh, just want to uh, shit a little bit. Yeah, it's two of them. I knew it. So two columns. And then just close that tag using the same name method. There you go. Save it. And then on the, your document, you go back here. Instead of using lines, what we say is we want to include certain tags. What tags? The name that we just defined it. Save it. Uh, let's regenerate the document again. And I presume that can that will go beyond a method, right? That's just yeah, it's just, just two being, tags in a file. Just being right? a regular comment, you can put it anywhere you yeah. want to. Yeah. Uh, so now that we have this, just look at that. Yeah. But you notice that the indentation is uh, doesn't look very good. So what we can do is we can fix this also. It will say indent equals zero, and this is another tip. Uh, saved and executes. There you go. Nice. Right. Nice. Another thing that we can see here, you see there is a, 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 a call out to something called some kind of caption. What we can do is put a caption in your source code. Uh, let's go to Hello World Java. And let's use in another regular code comment. And you have to follow the syntax of using that. So angular brackets, give it a number. Make sure that that number appears in your document like that. OK. So once we do this, I will need to restart the, uh, the build again. Uh, probably need to do a clean. Just to be extra sure, we got no lingering artifacts. And just give it a second. Oh, there's no warning. And there is. Nice. So you can define as many as you want. Mm, mm. I like, I, yeah, I, I, I prefer that actually the tags because then when people are maintaining their code, when they see the tags, they can see straight away that you know if they're if they're writing code outside of that or whatever, they need to focus on their documentation. Whereas if those tags aren't there and they're just changing code and line numbers, it could potentially make the docs out of date very, very much much quicker. Right? Yes, um, exactly. So when, with, with these tags, do you, what's your view on uh, the pollution of code with these kind of tags? Do you think it pollutes the code, or do you think it makes, makes developers think about documentation more while they're coding? I would say the later, the, okay. the, the later because well, I think the pollution is not really that much. As you can see, uh, well, unless you have a lot of commented uh, sections in your code, uh, that would mean perhaps your code is very interesting and has a lot of features, a lot of behavior that, that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time, so at least the examples that we have seen so far and in production that we have at Canoe, uh, we don't have that many comments. It's, it's just, it just grows organically. Okay. Yeah, it, it lends itself. So you actually can look at, uh, here's a one example of of a guy that is written fully using ASCII doc. It has a lot of information, lots of chapters. If the network will cooperate with us, uh, what's going on with the network? Uh, it was working a few minutes ago. OK, well, we won't see it right now live, but I can run it. If I'm not mistaken, I have it here already. Let's see, uh, open, build, targets. Uh, guide index. So this is the same guide generated using ASCII doc. Uh -huh. And what I like is that you get this table of contents for free automatically, which is get, gets calculated by any time you open a section or a subsection. You can get numbers or you simply can forego the numbers. And you start looking at this, yeah, well, there's your source code embedded and whatnot. You can have images, that's no problem. And uh, there are the callouts. And you can have a different style applied to this so that this collapse looks much closer to what you see in technical books. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you to decide you know, how much you want to change colors or how close you want to use the uh, standard ASCII doc style sheet. 
Uh, so there are many things that you can see. You can also have uh, links within the same document or multi pages. So this is, is a link outside to an API class. But somewhere here, let's uh, what is it? The observable transformation. This one here is just uh, this page right here. I have a link somewhere else in the same document in the appendixes. Uh, where is it? Uh, migrating modules, AST transformations. We can go back to that place. And this is a link within the same document. Mm -hmm. And the syntax to do this is very easy. It's, it's, it's not really that complicated. And you can link to the same document or any other document that you want, whether it's inside the same project or it's outside anywhere on the web that is available. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, thing, this seems very, very powerful. What the, it seems like it can be used in many, many kind of different situations. What was, the, what was the main use case that drove ASCII doc? The main use case was uh, writing such technical documents. Okay. But we have found out since the project started, ASCII doctor started roughly within three or four years ago, although the syntax, ASCII doc itself, is close to 15 years old. It, it was born in the Python community. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, once this thing uh, got out, it wasn't just developers, but book authors, mm. technical book authors, but also suddenly we got uh, poem writers and uh, cooks and whatnot, people that really just wanted to put out their content and they find out that ASCII doc was a, a much better solution. Mm -hmm. than Do some, pe some people write sessions as well, right? Presentations. Yeah, you, you can have, actually we had a presentation yesterday uh, of a, a person that was using, uh, let me see, what wasn't this slide, it was Rebuild.js or Deck.js. There are so many different slides <laughs> where for JavaScript and you can use, use those and the, uh, the source of the uh, slides will be written in ASCII doc. Yeah. You can also have static blocks or static websites written in ASCII doc. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let me show you this page. The uh, official documentation of ASCII doc, the website, is written using ASCII doc. If you go to the ASCII doc to GitHub repository, you'll find somewhere here there's this link ASCIIDoctor.org. This is the content, this is source for this website. So okay. if you want to know how they did it, then just go here and you find it. And in this organization, you can have, you look, there's so many different projects. There are three pages of projects related to ASCII Doctor. Mm -hmm. The Gradle plugin and the Maven plugin are part of, of this community. And if you want to find out which binaries you can use inside the JVM, uh, then you go to the Bintray repository, and we got a good number of projects out there. Oh, yeah, there we go. That you can consume. And as a matter of fact, hey, there's even ASCII doc. Like, mm -hmm. So here's another tip. If you want to have a much better uh, Javadoc documentation, then you can apply ASCII doc. Mm -hmm. As uh, in the Java doc, and then you use a standard doclet called ASCII doclet to render that content. So let me go back to the source that I have here, and this will answer the question: What is this funky little thing that we look here? This is actually ASCII doc embedded in my Java doc, mm -hmm. and for this to be rendered in Maven, just have to apply the Java doc plugin and configure the ASCII doclet task, and in Gradle you do something similarly. You define the, uh, the link to the ASCII doclet in the class path and then configure the Java doc task. So when you go back into the build, uh, say, where was it? Uh, right here. You can do uh, Gradle clean Java doc. So there's, again, nothing fancy, mm -hmm. nothing hidden. And then open the Java docs for that class. And it looks like standard ASCII doc. Mm -hmm. And you can even have embedded snippets of code. Nice. We can even make this photo. And this is one nice thing that about like Gradle is that it's so easy to make one task depend on another and the output that what I'm going to show you is the official documentation of another project that I have. It's called JavaFX, uh, JavaFX based J, uh, shapes called J Silhouette. Uh, build. I'm going to generate the guide. You will see some, something popping on in the screen very quickly, those things. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm generating shapes on the fly using the same project mm -hmm. and then embedding those images back into the Java doc. Okay. So, so that what ends up happening is something that looks like this. Uh, Subprojects guide index. Oh, wait a second. Uh, open subprojects guide build guide index. There we go. That's the right place. So we look at the Java doc and the ASCII docs and the sources for that. Say, let's pick this one. We got embedded images mm -hmm. and something that looks like ASCII doc. If you look at the sources for that particular class, let's make it bigger. It uh, looks like Java doc, and that is actually ASCII doc, mm -hmm. how you can embed uh, an image. So what we're doing at Trick with Gradle is make sure that we can generate those images during the build, putting them in the right directory, and then let's generate the Java doc, which will pick up that, those images. Mm -hmm. So with this, this is a nice combination of ASCII doctor and a build tool, making sure that you get a much better result in your documentation. Because the other way around is that you have to generate these images uh, outside mm -hmm. of your project. And you might update the sources. The images will be outdated. So you're back into the same problem of having production code and the snippets of code and doc document. But with Gradle, you can have everything glued together so that if I make a change to the class, this one, Rays, this will generate a different image. And when I generate the Java doc, then I will see the final image. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that's, that's how I come back talking about Groovy and Groovy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so we've got about 10 minutes left. So uh, how many tips have we done? Uh, like five or six. Five or My six. ultimate tip is everybody should go. If you want to know more about ASCII Doctor, then go and search for Mr. Hackey. He has a series of blog posts called Awesome ASCII Doctor. He has posted lots and lots of useful tips and tricks on how you can make tiny changes in ASCII Doctor and make your life much easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this document that I have here that I already showed, the, uh, yeah, there's the documentation, the guide, is broken down in several uh, files. It's not just one big ASCII Doc file. It actually, there's one file per chapter. I noticed uh, that when you break down your sources in this way, um, here is, let's open, uh, up, mate, this, uh, this particular field. I'm going to make this bigger. There we go. So there are many ASCII doc files. And there is eventually an index file where you can include as many files as you want. All right, let's make that bigger. If you, if you do this in this way, and you have several includes, then what ASCII doctor expects is that you should have proper delimitations in, the, in that particular file. Let's look into introduction. Let's see what I mean by this. There is an empty line at the beginning and an empty line at the end. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, and if you want to have these includes to look very close, then you will get in trouble. The includes will not work. So what you have to do is break down this using the spaces here. So to me, doing that looks, that doesn't look very nice. Mm -hmm. I want to see the, the blocks of, or at least logical blocks of information. And uh, this is how you do it. You just have to put empty spaces before and after. Mm -hmm. Another trick that we can have fine is, let's go back into this index. Say we don't want to look at again this, but I don't want to delete it. What would we do in documentation when, when we want to keep something out of that? We just simply comment it out. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I wrap around this using these characters? If I render back my content, uh, this will be here. I say Gradle clean ASCII, one more. Then, um, go back here, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It no longer appears. So no, not only can you have variables in your code, in, in, in your code because it's actually documentation, you can have comments, you can even have conditionals 
because you can evaluate those variables. Mm -hmm. It's nice. almost as if we were a full programming language. So it does. The, it's feeling it, like it feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is why it gets me really excited about the ASCII doc because it really feels like you are programming documentation. Yeah, yeah. And eventually you will reach out to a moment where. The default tags that are provided by ASCII doc are not good enough, so perhaps you want to capture the output of a running test and embed that output into the documentation, or maybe take a screenshot of a website and then embed it directly. So for that, we will have to have extensions. Mm -hmm. And ASCII doctor supplies an extension mechanism because ASCII doctor, he's the real kicker, it creates an ASC of your document, which means that you can create new blocks of documentation or remove or change everything. So let me show you this example. Um, I have it right here, GitHub. This is the ASCII doctor, big Latin example. I believe I have to change to a previous version of Gradle. I didn't upgrade this, uh, let's change to update. If you don't know what SDK man is, this is another useful tip, go to this website and this little project will help you keep track and up to date your versions of Gradle, Maven, and Java. No, not Java, not yet. Uh, Groovy, <laughs> Ceylon, Kotlin, Scala. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, bootstrap in Java. Yeah. 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 Well, SDK can do it. And uh, let's generate the content, and I will show you what's going on here. Uh, by the way, do you know the rules for, for Pig Latin? Do you know what Pig Latin is? No. It's like kind of wonky. Uh, language where you change, you, you move the first character of a word to the end and put A at the end. But if it's a vowel, then you do something else. So it has a, a few rules. Okay. So this is exactly what we're doing. It's a transformation for this big Latin thing. Um, there is an English sentence right there, the quick brown fox jumping over the lazy dog. And it's big Latin equivalent looks like this. I don't know how, the, the whole rules for big Latin. So it would be crazy if I were to write that Pig Latin sentence as is. So what we have actually is an extension that understands the rules and applies them. So your source is just regular English. And then apply a custom tag there. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you register this tag with an extension so that it can apply the rules. We do this, this is for uh, testing right now. We do it inside the same Gradle build. We build the extension using Groovy, but you can do it with Java or any other JVM language. Mm -hmm. It's another great thing about ASCII Doctor, is that it's very friendly to Java. So here's our Pig Latin ex uh, extension. You have to know a little bit of the, uh, the AST, so we're latching on into a block processor because we want to block, uh, process a paragraph. That's the paragraph. And once we have access to the content, then the rest of the code that is doing here is just iterating over each word and applying the transformation, pick Latin, to that particular word, and then generate a new paragraph joining each transform word using a space, mm -hmm. right? And there goes the, uh, the actual rules. So what is important is that what you end up writing is something that is very simple, and then you just apply a transformation to mm -hmm. it. And what are, what are real world examples of that? A real world examples of this. Not that Pig Latin isn't obviously oh, a real world yeah. example. I mean, that's probably a very useful uh, <laughs> extension to many. Yeah, a, a real world example will be uh, to keep track of all the figures or images that you embed in your document. And at the end of your document, you see a listing of all of them with links to point to those images. Okay. Or also have a listing of all the tables or the uh, source blocks or blocks of, of source code that you have embedded mm -hmm. in your document. Uh, you could also have uh, Mr. Hackey yesterday show an example of how you can embed a, a link to a Twitter account mm -hmm. just by saying something like this. Twitter, and then the, uh, the name is G Maple. This. And this, when render, will put exactly this content. Uh, this is the way that you actually generate links. Uh, this will be HTTPS, uh, Twitter.com, SGA, Maple. Uh, yeah. This. So this macro, this custom extension, will be expanded to that in the final content. Right, right. Regardless of if it's, if it's HTML or PDF.
it okay. will do the right thing for you. Okay. So these are real use case. And, uh, and when people create these extensions, then they can obviously use them locally. How would they, uh, how would they push that to? Uh, you can publish them as regular jars. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have another custom extension that I, I need to show you mm. and everybody else in the audience. Uh, let's say this, this is inside uh, TMP jar one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the diagram extension, which applies a uh, Ruby gem called ASCII Doctor Diagram, allows you to embed ASCII art into your cool. document. So, for example, this file here just has a plain ASCII doc files and then this, this interesting diagram mm -hmm. with some annotations for colors can be rendered in the following way. Well, I didn't clean, so it's going to download the Ruby gem, configure the gem. Yeah, it's going to take a couple of seconds. And uh, well, one of the nice things about this, the way you use it, it seems really accessible to developers. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's very it, easy. It, it follows the, the usual developer path, whether it's like you know building through Maven or Gradle, and then just looking at your file. There's nothing new to a developer here, right? No, no, exactly. So it's been rendered now. So let's look at the final document. Uh, index and there you go mm -hmm. very simple to the point diagrams and you can also have UML diagrams or uh, which may be class diagrams use case diagrams or sequence and you can have graph base also using genoplot uh, what else can you have there's another diagram also called shape from uh, that requires you to have Python installed mm -hmm. Uh, so the diagram that, that, gem has nice. plenty of things. That would be nice, being able to take a, take a source file and actually generate a UML diagram in ASCII art for, you for, for ASCII. That would be, be kind of nice, representation of a class. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if you go back this, if you want to have a UML diagram as the header of your class, then you just embed it directly using ASCII doclet. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sounds good. A couple of minutes left. Um, any, any other tips or should we wrap up? Uh, I think there will be plenty enough. So uh, again, let's put back the, uh, the web page of Ask Your Doctor. This is your first stop to find more information. If you want to know more about the syntax, then go into the docs link and you'll find plenty of information out there. But the most important one will be the Ask Your Doctor user manual. Mm -hmm. In this one, you will find lots of information on how you can write much better documentation. If you want to write tables and lists and change the styles, or there's, there should be more documentation that you really want to get into writing custom extensions, or if you want to use a different backend, how you can configure PDF to use a different theme or a different style sheet, there's plenty of information going around. Awesome. And the ASCII doc community is very friendly, is very open, and it's growing at a very fast pace. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and, where, and how would people join that community? Are there existing channels people can join, or Slack, or, or mailing lists? We have an ASCII Doctor Twitter account, if not mistaken. There's also a forum. Uh, the webpage will be discussascidoctor.org. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so sure we have a Slack, but I'm pretty sure we have an IRC channel. Okay, okay awesome. So, uh, well, that's a great, that's a great point to, 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 for people to start learning ASCII Doctor. And uh, Andres, thank you very much, man. Thank you very it's, much. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you on. Yeah. And uh, the, next, the next session, the next VJUG session, in fact, on the Night Hacking stage is in uh, around one hour's time, one hour 15, where we're going to be talking about uh, uh, some of the uh, kind of almost augmented reality and, and, and Terminator meets Minority Report, which is a great title. Oh, so awesome. uh, that's going to be fun. Yes. Um, so till then, thanks very much. Thank and, you very much. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of Java Land. Thank you.